Hey, Brick. Whoa, whoa, whoa. What? What the hell are you doing? Is that ice? <sighs> What the hell are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying out a new breeding method. That's a, that's a horrible idea. Where did you get that information? Uh, the internet. Why? I look, 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 look. I saw someone online say that you get more female shrimp at lower temperatures, okay? It's a phenomenon called temperature-dependent sex determination, and it's seen species like the American alligator and the red-eared slider. I'm not just doing this for random. I mean, so that the person online actually showed some research suggesting that shrimp also have TSD. Okay, show me this research. Oh, yeah, yeah, I've got it right here. Ugh. Look, right in the abstract here, it says they found that shrimp eggs hatched and produced four female offspring for every one male at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. The exact opposite was found at 75 degrees Fahrenheit with over four males for every one female that hatched. This tank was at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, so you've been getting way fewer females than you should. And you're just not getting as many shrimp. Because of you, I do not have as many shrimp as I should. And I don't like that at all. Okay. To be fair, they did mention a higher survival rate and more eggs at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But if you get enough females at a lower temperature, then you have a chance to get way more offspring, even if their growth rate is slower at that temperature, okay? Look, I did the math. New Caridina can have anywhere from 20 to 50 eggs in a clutch. So let's say they have 25 eggs. If right now our tank is at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, then we're only getting Again, one female for every four males. We're getting five females and 20 males, okay? Now, let's say we lower the temperature to 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That does the exact opposite. So then we're getting 20 females for every five males. Four times the number of female shrimp and four times the egg production capability in each generation. It's all right here. That, that all makes sense if it's true. Let me see that paper real quick. Okay, fine, fine, have it. Okay, interesting. Let me go ahead and share another paper with you. So take a look at this one. This experiment compared eggs that developed at different temperatures and then tracked growth rate, biochemical composition, and reproduction of the hatched offspring. There's a lot in here, but I want you to focus on this table. Here's the sex ratio they found at each temperature. Let's compare that to what we found in the other paper. To do that, we'll graph the percentage of female offspring in relation to temperature. This is a pretty huge difference. How the heck are we supposed to figure out which one is right? I hate science. I think we can figure this out if we look at these papers a little bit more closely. First, let's look at the experimental design. So that first study had three tanks of shrimp for each temperature, so three replicates, but did not say how many shrimp were in each tank. The second study used nine replicates for each temperature with each replicate consisting of a single female and her offspring. So the second one is both more detailed and has a greater number of replicates, so it increases the reliability of the study. Does that sound fair? Yeah, makes sense in general. Not only that, the first study says that only female shrimp can develop a backstripe. And if we look in our tank right now, we can see that that's not true. If they were using that incorrect information to tell males and females apart, then how reliable are their numbers actually? In contrast, this second paper is done by a team of researchers who have extensive experience with Neocaridina. While they don't describe their sexing methods in the paper, it seems far more likely that they know how to tell the difference between males and females. Okay, well even that paper found more females at a lower temperature. So let's, let's go ahead and put that back in. That's not even true. Get, step that, step that. Okay, fine, fine. While there does appear to be a trend based on these three data points, this paper says there's no statistical significance between them meaning the results could be from random chance. Plus, just look at the shrimp in our tank after they've been kept at 78 degrees Fahrenheit for four years. What would we see if shrimp were affected by TSD? Oh, okay. I guess there should be a lot more males than females. Uh, okay, fair, fair enough. Exactly. There's still a pretty even ratio in there. Especially if that first paper was true, we would see an overwhelming number of males in this tank. And I, we just don't see that. And obviously if we had way more males and females in the tank, then that would mean that all the females get swarmed whenever they're breeding and that can sometimes stress them out and kill them and then lead to an even bigger imbalance in the ratio. So fine, I, I get your point, 
Exactly, this shrimp colony would have crashed long ago if those TSD results were true. That's why researchers are so worried about all of the reptiles, the fish that use TSD in the wild. As climate change affects those temperatures, it can completely throw off their population so they could have all males or all females hatch. And you can have a serious population issue in just a generation. Variations of just a few degrees are enough to change all offspring to male or female, which is useful in a breeding setting, but could turn into a horrible feedback loop in the wild, and we could lose all of those populations. You got it? Good. I heard that. Don't even think about it. Fine. And stop touching the thermostat. As for you, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this video both educational and entertaining. That's what Shrimply Explained is all about. We want to be here to provide the most information for you so that you can make the best decision for your tank. While we don't necessarily know if shrimp have TSD or not, they are definitely affected by temperature. And so if you'd like to learn more about their fascinating life cycle and how temperature plays a part in every single stage, then take a look at this video. <laughs> Happy shrimping.